Scientists can use DNA to pinpoint criminal suspects, trace migration patterns, modify organisms to produce medicine, the list goes on and on. But to do any of this stuff with DNA, we need a lot of it. That's where PCR comes in. PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction, and it's exactly what it sounds like. A chain reaction that creates a polymer, a long molecule made up of repeating units. Those units are four different nucleotide bases, referred to as A, T, C, and G. DNA is double-stranded, which means it's not just one polymer, but two. And these strands are complementary. They complete each other. Specifically, A only connects to T, and C only connects to G, forming the DNA sequence. So how does PCR give us more DNA? PCR is a technique that mimics the way cells in nature make copies of their DNA by pulling apart the complementary strands and using each as a template. To do this, they use a molecular machine called DNA polymerase, which zips along a strand of DNA and pulls in complementary bases as it goes. When we want more DNA in the lab, instead of a cell, we have a tube. Like a cell, the tube's got template DNA, DNA polymerase, and assorted nucleotides, plus one more special ingredient called a primer, which tells the DNA polymerase where to start. Depending on what piece of DNA we want to copy, we design the sequence of A's, T's, C's, and G's in the primer to specifically match the beginning of our sequence. Now we apply near boiling heat and see what happens. Near boiling? But molecular machines usually break at that temperature. The secret to PCR's efficiency is actually a special polymerase that was discovered in bacteria living in thermal vents at Yellowstone National Park. But anyway, the complementary strands are pulled apart and primers stick based on the order of their nucleotides. They act as signposts for DNA polymerase to start running along the DNA template strands, pulling in complementary bases one by one by one until two new copies of the piece of DNA are finished. But we've only made one copy, when we actually want way more than that. So we repeat the process with the new DNA as the template, setting off the chain reaction however many cycles we want, giving us two to the nth power copies of the DNA fragment. In as little as an hour, we'll have more than enough to get a suspect's DNA fingerprint or develop a totally new therapeutic.